anyone with a cell phone, please silence. And since we have new members here, can we have a city staff introduction? Leonard Cart, Chief Building Official, City of Daytona Beach. Jim Flaherty, Project Manager. John Cecil, Building Rehabilitation Inspector. And Robert Jagger, City Attorney. Okay. Uh, we need approval of our last minutes from July 20, 2021. Um, so I'd like to make a motion. I move to approve the minutes from to July 21, 20. We have a second? We have a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, that passed. Uh, let's see, we need to do a roll call. Albert? Here. Bailey? Here. Blodgett? Here. Did you say Luton? Yes. yes, here. Okay, we can get right to our new cases. Uh, case A, BP 2021-0060, 29 South Grandview Avenue, appeal of notice of con condemnation and demolition order. Uh, before we start, I I'd request a favor. We have a couple new members. Uh, we have a new board attorney as well, Mr. Simpson. Uh, I think it'd be appropriate at this point to allow Mr. Simpson to introduce himself and to lay out the procedures for the, the hearing, and then I'd like to make a short statement in terms of why we're here and, and what the, the uh, review process will be. Okay. Uh, hi, yes, uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Scott Simpson. I'm a, a local attorney. Um, I serve do a lot of uh, local government work. I'm a city attorney for um, several local smaller cities in this area. And um, I've never actually represented, the cities I represent don't actually have this particular board, but they do make these particular types of decisions. But sometimes they go to a city commission or council instead of this board. But I do look <coughs> forward to working with you. Um, the, most of what you're gonna do is, as a decision maker, it's gonna be called what's quasi-judicial. I don't know if you've ever heard that phrase. What that means is um, your decisions need to be supported by substantial competent evidence. So that's the review standard, whereas if you were making policy decisions, it's uh, more a much lesser standard, fairly debatable you know, a standard. But here it's quasi-judicial because you're sort of acting like judges in that you're taking rules, laws that the city has on its books, and you're applying it to a set of facts. Um, the one thing I think it would be uh, good to do is anytime you're in a quasi-judicial setting, there's something called ex parte communications. Uh, that is if you have communications regarding a particular issue uh, that's before you outside of the meeting, just like you're not allowed to talk to a judge or a jury, um, but here you are allowed to have ex parte communications, you just need to disclose the ex parte communication. Um, and it would be a, just stating who you talk to, the substance of the conversations. And the intent of that is just so the other party knows everything that could affect the decision that you make. They have knowledge of it, so they can respond to it if need be. If you say, well, I talked to this neighbor and they told me this. And they say, well, that's not, you know, he can, the property owner can say, well, that's not true because of this, you know. Um, and it may be good just in the, um, if, to help remind everybody about it, sometimes they put that in the agenda, the summary of the agenda, the very beginning disclosure of ex parte communications. Um, the way the process works, you started, you were opening the hearing, <laughs> and you started that process, and then you, witnesses will be sworn in, and um, there will be a presentation by staff and then applicants. Um, then there I assume during those presentations, you're allowed to ask questions to whoever's making the presentation. The public will then be given an opportunity to respond, just because it is a public meeting, public hearing. And then once everybody's had their opportunity to discuss it, the, the public hearing part of it will be closed, and then there will be deliberation amongst the body, and then a motion in a second. And we, you know, we have to have a majority vote uh, to support the decision. And uh, the majority is a quorum, you know, a majority of the quorum present. So we have four here today. That would take three to, to approve it today. Um, and that's uh, basically how the process works. There's, there is the, um, 
right to do under our code, Daytona Beach's code, there is a right to do cross-examination limitedly if somebody wants to ask questions of a witness up speaking. So does anybody have any questions? Uh, anything? Not really your only time to ask a question. <laughs> you can ask anytime you like. But so uh, I look forward to working with you all. And uh, my understanding, I didn't know until I got here that you all haven't met for almost two years. So uh, kind of new for some board, new board members and a refresher comments for people who haven't been here in two years. So look forward to working with you all. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Simpson. Um, and uh, more specifically, if I could just make a general opening as to all the cases and, and uh, tell you why we're here, what your standard of review is um, in terms of um, the cases. As city attorney, I act sort of like a prosecutor would, uh, like the state attorney would in, in criminal cases, although those, these are clearly not criminal matters. Uh, we're here today uh, for four appeals of, the, of orders from the building official with regard to condemnation and demolition of structures that were deemed to be unsafe. Um, with regard to the code, the standard for determining that a building is unsafe and subject to condemnation and demolition, it's in Section 110 of the International Property Maintenance Code, which is adopted by city ordinance. The code says that the, the building official, in this case, Mr. Urquhart, who is here, um, shall order the owner or owner's authorized agent of any premises upon which is located any structure, which in the code officials or owner's authorized agent judgment after review is so deteriorated or dilapidated or has become so out of repair as to become dangerous, unsafe, insanitary, or otherwise unfit for human habitation or occupancy, and such that it is unreasonable to repair the structure. Uh, so that's essentially the standard uh, under which the orders are issued. And of course, we're here uh, for an appeal of the order. Um, each of the persons who will present today, either virtually or in person, have filed a notice of, of appeal and have received notice of this hearing. Um, so we can proceed to the first case. Okay. Thank you, Bob. OK, again, uh, case A. BP 2021-0060, 29 South Grandview Avenue. Is there anyone here in the audience on that case? Uh, can we swear the witnesses, or can we do that all at once, if you'd like to, or can we do it at That's fine, all at once. All at once. So, anyone here that intends to testify, uh, please stand. For all, everybody, every case, everybody yeah. can testify, and see what you're hearing today. Um, and, would you, Kathy, would you normally do the, Okay. Um, Scott, are you a notary? I am not. <laughs> okay. Well, don't, you don't have to be a notary to do the, the swearing in. Okay. Um, I can, have yeah, I've never done it before, but I can think I can do it. That's wing it. Say, Bob, <laughs> we're, both, we're both notaries. <laughs> okay. It's not a requirement that you be a notary. It's just a requirement that the witness be sworn in. So I believe, it, I'm, I haven't really looked at that issue directly. Scott, do you know any differently? I don't know any differently. Okay. So, uh, but, but I think that'll okay. cover All right. our purposes. Yeah. You can just raise your right hand. Uh, do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God? Okay. Right, Sounds you. like what I heard on TV. Sounds, <laughs> Sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, perhaps with everyone sworn in, then um, we would, uh, as a, the city prosecutor, we would call Mr. Uh, Cecil is our first witness. Once the city puts on its case, uh, the owner's representative or the owner may speak. Okay. All right. Hello, John Cecil, Building Rehabilitation Inspector. Um, we're starting out with uh, 29 Grandview, South Grandview. Mr. Cecil, how are you familiar with this property? Um, I drive by this property at least a couple of times a week. When did you first become aware of any sort of um, issues with regard to the structures and their safety? That would have been in uh, November of 21. And at that time, uh, what did you observe or, or how was your attention drawn to the buildings? I noticed that the, the property was unsecured and we had um, multiple homeless that were actually living on the steps underneath of the structure. Um, the house was run down, dilapidated. Um, there was a lot of trash, litter, debris, all scattered all over the porch and, and everything like that. When was the last time you were at the property? Yesterday. And what did you observe yesterday when you visited the property? Uh, yesterday, um, the property has been boarded up since the original posting. The underneath of the house, there is homeless there. We do have current pictures of that. 
um, where they ripped off the bottom door that goes underneath of the house and, and the homeless is actually living underneath of the home right now. All right, you have but photos uh, to present to I do. today? I do. And are there date stamps on these photos? Uh, there, uh, I see up in the top left there are some date stamps. So, yes. for example, on this first photo, this picture was taken in November of 2021. Is that correct? That's correct, yes. All right, and you have photos from your most recent visit as well? I do, uh, not as of yesterday, but from, um, I'd have to look back on the date. This is when I posted the notice of hearing, so that would have been in April 17th, around that date, is when I got my most current pictures. Okay, so as we go through these, if we're looking at some photos that are back from 2021, if you wouldn't mind also explaining, you know, if anything is different in current day uh, mm -hmm. with regard to the condition of the structure, all right? Okay. All right, well, tell us what we're looking at here. This is when you're, when you're going down the street, and this, this is how I come across the property. This is what it looked like before I posted it. So once it, is, it looks like this, you can tell that it's abandoned or no one has been at this property or living at this property. Um, there's plastic. There was, um, the windows were open on the one side, and then on the back. This has been a code enforcement house also, and um, that's how we come across it also. So, right, next photo. Hmm? this is showing the soffit, how the roof is uh, deteriorating and falling down different spots. And you can see the overgrown grass, weeds that are grown on the, on the structure. So there is nobody at this property. Very good, next photo. As here, you can see the, the, the window, how the windows broke there on the um, second window and they got plywood on the inside. So trying to prevent someone from going in the structure from this side. And you can tell how the windows are damaged there also. This just shows some more rot from the wood from the, um, the roof. Next photo. This is just showing a side view. This is from Froggy's parking lot. This is, so you're looking at the north end of the structure here. And you can see damage. Uh, this is the bottom of the, the structure. And it looks like it's blocked there, but that's tin on the side underneath of the structure. So they were prying that open and getting in. And then you'll see another picture on the other side that'll have the doors to where the doors are all ripped off. Right here is, they've already ripped those doors off. The one door is completely gone. I don't even know where it went. And they are living up underneath of that house. All right, so what you're saying is when you went out most recently, um, this door that has a condemned uh, stencil, that door is gone entirely? That's correct. And that this was opened up uh, for anyone to enter or exit? Yes, and that was, uh, that was yesterday. All right. And uh, were you able to view from your position uh, what was inside there? Yes, I did. I, I have pictures of that, Okay, too. we'll come to that. Very good. Thank you. Next slide. As you can see, um, you got damaged. The door what is pushed open. Um, there's no railing. There's anything. That's, that's the second story that drops down to the ground. Um, it's all overgrown. The windows on, on the left-hand side there uh, has, does have cracks in it on the one side there where the window drops. Open on the left? Yes. All right. And, and uh, when you see a window open like that, what does that tell you in terms of the condition of the, the structure and, and what might be on the inside of that? Um, it tells me a good possibility that there is homeless in that structure because they were going up that set of stairs and they were going in the back door of, of this structure and they were inside of that structure. That what about vermin or the elements? Absolutely. When the, you got rain, wind, everything going in, and that's going in on the inside, and then that's deteriorating the floor, the trusses, or the uh, floorboard, or excuse me, <laughs> the uh, the floor, and the rain is. Then you're going termites and you know different like that. Very good. Next photo. This is just showing some overgrown grass and where um, the the path of of and we'll say rodents, it could be homeless, going in and out of the structure. What are we looking at here? You're, you're looking at the same picture as before, but a little bit closer. It shows how the glass is broke, where the elements can get into the structure there. That's a door. That's the door. And then also at the top up there, 
there is no vents and you got birds can go in there you know a anything can get inside the elements and also can also get inside Soto? this is a, a rear shot looking west from the street from the alleyway here we see the the second floor door without any sort of uh, stairwell exactly correct uh, and yes. the window that we had earlier that was opened and the the door which is partially there now but was removed is that yes correct? yes okay this is a, a shot of again out of froggy's parking lot as looking at the stairs um going up that's where they were going in and out of the the house so the property was unsecured at that time all right next slide and there's some you know showing some of those things Right. Um, is there, uh, I'm looking at the photo and I see some sort of separation. And, uh, there is. That's wood rot. Things. Wood rot from the door. The door jam and it is um, separated from the elements. All right. Next slide. You show more wood rot on the roof, and then the actual electrical, where the light was, how it's damaged. There is no power, no water at this location. Also, that's been verified. All right, next slide. Same back uh, photo. Same, same photo. All right. Moving on. This is your meter box where there's no meter showing that there is no electricity at this structure. So it's all overgrown. So there's not been any activity at that location. This, this would tell you there's been no power for some time, I would assume. That's correct. Based on the overgrowth, right? Yes. All right, next slide. This is just showing our postings. Very good, next. Now this this is more recent now. Yeah, this is on 418 where they've boarded up the structure. Very good. Next. It's just showing some wood more root, wood rot. Right. What does this indicate to you in terms of the stability of the structure or danger to a person who might um, visit the structure? That that's showing me that uh, that the rain is coming in is going through the roof. There's a roof leak that's showing that. And if someone would happen to walk up to the door, this is out onto the porch area that that debris does fall down onto the porch because there was um, remnants of part of that on, on the porch. Next slide. It's just the, the posting of the hearing date. That's the white paper. Very good. Next slide. It's showing more of the boarding up, that they did do the boarding up, but the, the gro overgrowth is still going on there. Does that overgrowth go up into the building? Did you observe that? I did not observe that. Okay. I did not. Um, but I presume over time that growth would get into the rafters, etc. Yes, because if you remember right, that second window was broken on the back side. It did have wood there, but uh, it can get it go through there. Next slide. That just show more they, where they boarded up. Next slide. More boarding up. There you see that condemned no trespassing has been ripped off of the hinges. Um, there is no boarding up of the other window up there, so you still have elements going in. And if you notice, they do rip down the notices that are put onto the structure, and that's why we go ahead and then we, we spray paint the house so they can't take those down. All right, next. You can see More of the activity. same here with the entry. Yes. Next slide. Here's photos of inside of the structure. Right, what is all this um, debris or, or, or material here? If, if you if you look uh, on the upper on the upper part of the picture, there it's canned goods to where they've you know went to the homeless shelter and, and got their some cans. They got them piled up there against the wall. They got their books, everything and they're staying in there. I didn't go all the way into the structure underneath. I just stopped at the door and back up underneath. It looks like that they do have um, quite a bit of bedding material underneath that. So this indicates to you clearly that vagrants are inhabiting the space. Absolutely. You got water bottles, Gatorade bottles. Slide. More of the same? Mm -hmm, more of the same. You can see the, they got one sheet hanging down there for privacy, I guess you could say. Fine. It's just showing um, boarding up and a little bit of the overgrowth, and the window is still, like I showed before, still not secured there. Right. What are we looking at here? 
uh, we're looking at uh, we're looking at the overgrowth, and we're looking at the the roof there, the damage on the roof. What, on the, tell me what what's going on here. We've got different uh, plywood. It looks like is that indicating? Yeah, it looks it, it looks like they've done a repair at one time because the other sides are white, and so it looks like that that drip edge there. You can tell it's being it's rusting. There's water getting down in behind it, and so it looks like that they've repaired that at one time. That and I'm not sure if it was this owner or not. Right, but that would tell you there's water intrusion. That's correct. Yes. Very good. Next slide. It's just a shot from the street. All right. Next. All right. We have a toilet in the front yard. Yeah. Dunk uh, litter and debris. Anything else? Yeah, I'm just showing more actually of of the boarding up because these are all the on 418. This is another shot of the electrical. That's where the electrical meter would be. All right. Next slide. Same. Same. And then uh, if you look at the wood rot on the roof, they're okay. up in the upper left-hand corner. I see. And what does that indicate to you? Uh, indicates that the water intrusion on the structure. And that's. Mm -hmm. Is that all of them? That's all the photos. All right. Very good. Well, well what about uh, your observations of the building indicate to you that the structure is unsafe or dilapidated and unfit for human occupancy? Absolutely, yes. Is, is there, okay. So you would agree that the structure is unsafe and it's dilapidated and it's unfit for human occupancy? Yes. Occupancy. All right. All right. Thank you. Any questions from the property owner of Mr. Cecil? Okay, great. We'll have you up in a second. If you don't have any questions, uh, we've got the building official to uh, testify, and then you can come up and speak after that. Yeah, we, we agree with everything. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize we already had a deal on this, but... Um, no, we, no, we don't. Oh, we don't. Okay. All right, very good. Well, in a moment, you can come up and speak, and we'll see where we're at in terms of the building. All right. Uh, state your name, please, and your position. Glenn Urquhart, Chief Building Official, City of Daytona Beach. And Mr. Urquhart, have you been to the site? Yes, I have. When, when were you last at the site? About several weeks ago. All right. And um, it, tell me what you observed when you were there. Pretty much of the same thing that we first observed um, when we opened up the case as far as it, it still is attracting um, homeless and vagrants uh, to the property. It still has junk litter and debris around it. It still has the plant growth grown into the water sources that as you can see with the um, the plywood and everything that's uh, saturated with water that that is uh, um, drawing the plant growth into it and then uh, you have everything as far as on the lower structure where they're uh, inhabiting. And it just occurred to me that some of the board members might not be familiar with you. Would you just briefly explain your education and professional background just so they have some background on you? I've been um, in uh, the building profession well for a long time as far as with construction and everything. Um, with a couple engineering firms for about 12 years, uh, then with uh, City of Ormond Beach uh, for 10 years um, as far as their building department, uh, then now with the City of Daytona Beach, I'm in my 10th year. You hold any licenses? I hold licenses in mechanical, electrical, plumbing, building, um, all aspects of plans examining, um, chief uh, building official, um, as well as uh, fire inspector and fire investigator. Right, very good, thank you. So, uh, based on your observations of the structure, it, um, do you have an opinion as to whether or not the structure is unsafe or dilapidated? The such struct a, such structure that it's unfit for occupancy. Hundred percent. Right. Tell me what what is it that you observe that indicates you the structure is um, dilapidated to that degree? As far as um, just the structural components on the outside, as far as uh, you getting into the rot and stuff, and on the inside, we actually were on the inside with the police department. Um, and the, f the floors are unstable as well as um, you have a lot of, as you're walking, it's, it, it feels like you could actually go through the floors. Uh, then as far as uh, downstairs as well, it, all of it is dirt on, on, uh, you know, as far as underneath. Um, your windows, your roof, your doors, your porch on the outside. So it's um, as far as how it is and it presents to us, uh, it's an unstable uh, house at this point. All right, and um, it was noted by Mr. Cecil that there apparently has been no electricity to the site for some time. That is correct. How does that uh, contribute to the dilapidation? 
that creates um, well, what's known in the, bu the building world as a sick structure, uh, where it's not air conditioned, you, you, so you have no condition component keeping the house. And this happens to brand new houses that they built. Um, if if you're not conditioning it, and it just goes untended to. It'll become a sick building as well, where your mold and everything will increase and then spread throughout. And is that exacerbated by the fact that the structure is open to the elements? Yes. And would you agree that vermin are likely infecting the the building uh, due to those openings? Yeah, they got they got free reign in that one. All right. Um, in your opinion, is the um, structure capable of being rehabilitated? It's. It, in this one, if if it were to be, it's gonna um, the fifty percent rule is gonna come in, and that means that everything would have to be brought into a uh, hundred percent modern code. Is it uh, feasible to? Um, it would be a restructure. Be, be, this it would be beyond the cost of what what it's worth, but like anything, if people want to invest the money, that's that's their call. All right. Um, do it, does anyone have any questions on the board of either of the city's witnesses? All right. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Um, sir, if you would come up, please. And just tell the board your name and, uh, and what your relationship is to the owner. Good morning. My name is Asif Khan. I'm an engineer and a general contractor. So my client hired me to look at the property. And as a very well put in by the building officials, uh, I totally agree with them. So this, we cannot salvage the building, so we're going to go ahead and uh, demo the building following the guidelines by the building officials. How long, How long do you need to demolition the building? Well, uh, we'd have to uh, look at the availability of uh, some equipment and uh, some trailer and stuff like that. If you could give us like 60 days, that would be because uh, we are from uh, Central Florida, like Orlando and Kissimmee area. So if you could get that much time, that would be great. Mr. Urquhart, do you have any objection to that resolution? No, I don't. All right. Um, the, the only thing I would suggest or for y'all's consideration is, um, I assume he has to apply for a permit to demolish and then demolish. And I don't know if there's other steps along the way, just so the city would not have to wait the full 60 days if they don't ask for a permit, that we say a permit be requested for demolition within a X number of days. And then whatever else needs, put time frames, and then ultimately the structure needs to be demolished within 60, but I don't know, 30 days to pull a permit. I, I don't know what that next time. Meeting, next meeting usually. Whatever you yeah, whatever. Typically, we would continue the case to the next meet, meeting for a status. I certainly agree that the parameters for timing of obtaining a permit may be appropriate, but uh, okay. my anticipation is that we will reschedule this for the next meeting for an update and have a deadline 60 days for the second meeting, the following meeting. Is that acceptable? Yes, if, if we did, um, the, uh, I'm, I'm in agreement with Mr. Simpson as far as a, do a, a request for uh, demolition, do the application, you could actually start that today. Yes. Um, and then put that in and then go ahead and list your, your contractor at that point. You, we can make the change to it. At least we'd have something on record show, sure, we, showing. We that intend to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Yeah. Sure. We intend to do that. At, at this point, I suppose a motion would be appropriate. I'd move to uh, go with the uh, builder's department's recommendation to demo and have an application within 10 days. Uh, I think probably the, the best thing to say is first that you uphold the um, city staff's determination okay. of that the structure is unsafe uh, and needs to be demolished. And then the second part of that would be um, the corrective action time frame. Okay. So, so I uphold or uh, agree with the up. What's that? Um, you want me to make it for you? Sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, a motion uh, to uphold city staff's determination that uh, 
property located at 29 South Grandview Avenue is in a state of uh, disrepair and unsafety that it needs to is unsafe for human occupation um, or occupancy and it needs to be demolished that would be the first motion that's my motion Well, or we can do it in one. I was just. Yeah, but if we can make that part one of the motion, and okay, then part two would be the time frames uh, okay. for demolition. And then um, that the uh, applicant, the property owner, make an application and receive a demolition permit uh, prior to the next meeting of this board, mm -hmm. and that the structure ultimately will be demolished within 60 days of today. Okay. Otherwise, uh, if neither one of those are accomplished, the city is authorized to proceed with demolition. Second. Very good. Okay. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second. The public comment. Do we take public comment before these under the procedures? I don't believe so. We take, well, we should take public comment before the vote though. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Does anybody in the public want to speak? We have a second, Bobby can do it. Yeah. yeah. Open for discussion. Very good, thank you. So anyone for public comment? All right, and then discussion by the board. And I maybe just ask, because I mentioned if anybody has any ex parte communications regarding this issue, this, mm -hmm. this applicant. Has anybody had any ex parte communications regarding this issue? No. No? I believe I have either. So we're good there. Yep. Uh, you want to do a roll call vote? Mr. Bailey? Aye. Hi. 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 Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, Kim, will you be preparing an order based on the motion yeah. and uh, providing that to this <coughs> gentleman? You have his address and everything mm. you need? Yeah. Okay. Very good. And to the owner, of course. Great. <coughs> okay. We can move on to case B. BP 2021-0059, 3000 Stanford Avenue, an appeal of notice of condemnation and demolition order. All right, uh, thank you. Um, I was informed earlier this morning that there may be an agreement on this, or at least a discussion needs to be had with the owner. If we could um, entertain that before we get into the hearing, it may shorten things. Uh, Mr. Urquhart, would you like to speak to that? Glenn Urquhart, Chief Building Official, City of Daytona Beach. Thank you. Before you start, is there anyone in the audience here to speak to this case? Is there anyone virtually in attendance? I am. All right, very good. Um, your name's on on Zoom. Zoom. Jimmy Sheriffs. And are you the owner? I am the son of the owner. And I grew up in that. All right. And, and there is an authorization in your backup which uh, allows them to appear on behalf of the owner. All right, uh, very good. Uh, Mr. Urquhart, if you could just state where we're at on this, and then we'll allow the owner's representative to speak. Sure. We've been, um, uh, Ms. Flaherty, as well as uh, John Cecil, they've been in communication um, with the son in reference to this property. This property uh, burnt down about two years ago. Um, so where we're at, we did have an oil tank that was um, buried in the ground there that they were looking, they were having a hard time getting someone to remove the oil before they could remove that, and then go into demolition he has agreed to uh, demolish the house um, mr. Cecil spoke this morning actually with a demolition company they would be able to demolish around uh, they could go ahead and still demolish the structure uh, with the tank still in the ground that was the big hang-up so we're looking to move forward and uh, have him go ahead and go with the demolition and get that started uh, because it's been so long and our biggest <clears throat> concern in this situation is uh, the particulate matter that is produced when you have everything that burns together because this house is wide open to the whole residents in that neighborhood so we would like to go ahead and uh, push forward with the demolition uh, hopefully uh, the, the sun's in agreement with moving forward with that now um, as they can do a demolition with the storage tank in the ground still and to be clear, it would be the property owner doing the demolition, not the city. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. All right. Uh, sir, uh, again, state your name and uh, tell us if, if this is acceptable to you. Uh, Jimmy Sherris. And 
Um, yes, I actually spoke with Mike McDonald at uh, Sam Sula Demolition yesterday. Um, and actually yesterday was the first time he said that he could come out and do demolition around the tank and then come back and finish it. They, they gave us a bid back in January um, for demolition. He told me that they could still honor the same bid, but I need to talk to Mike to make sure that there isn't any extra cost for them coming back uh, with regard to that, um, you know, if they come around twice. The only thing that needs to be done because of this fuel oil tank hang up, uh, the only thing that needs to be done is the, um, what's the word for it? The, uh, the thing with the well, there's well water, so it has to be capped. I've already spoken to um, all Florida plumbing and they told me that roughly there's like a week turnaround time to be able to do that. But that's something that has to be uh, performed for, uh, for the permit. Um, so, um, yeah, so yeah, that's what we've been trying to move forward with um, since uh, January, because you know we were we went to the hearing for the zoning uh, um, code enforcement, excuse me, um, uh, in in the late fall, and I've been you know I've been on the horn with um, the the inspector in charge of the property, giving them updates on where we're at with things, and it's been, I mean I'm still waiting to hear uh, back from the latest. Uh, bid company, if you will, that can do the fuel oil uh, uh, evacuation. Um, it, it's, it's, been, it's been crazy because not even the people that are in the business of doing that kind of thing know who does it. I, you know, not that you guys are interested, but I started off contacting the original fuel oil company to put the oil in it. And they stopped evacuating a few years ago. So then I got them to look up old invoices to find out what are we looking at as far as fuel oil in the tank, how big of a tank, that kind of thing. And it looks like it's probably a 250 gallon tank. And you know, the last time we put fuel oil in there was right around the time when my dad passed and he used to keep the temperature 80 degrees. But since then, you know, it's been mild winters. So we haven't used the heat. So most of that's in there. So that's what the, the big issue has been. And Mike from Sam Sula said he can't touch it if it's got, uh, you know, if it's got oil in it for, you know, for, uh, you know, the reasons for licensing reasons for his business. So, um, but anyway, so that's what we're, that's where we're, that's where we're at with that is to get that done. And then, you know, the, uh, the so I, I got to talk to Mike at Sam Sula to see what the procedure would be, you know, to kind of have a roadmap of how they would do that. And, you know, if there's extra cost in doing that, hopefully there wouldn't be, um, so yeah, we're not against demolition. We've been, we decided to do it um, many, many, many months back in the fall. And, um, and uh, I, I guess that message didn't get related to the building department uh, appropriately, uh, which is why we're at this hearing, I'm, I'm presuming today. So yeah, do you have any specific questions that you need me to answer other than what I told you or? Could you tell us how long you're going to need to demolish the property and remove the tank? I don't know. I have to talk to Mike at, um, at Sam Sula Demolition to, to find out what kind of timetable they have. Um, the, tank, the tank is an issue to remove. It just needs to be evacuated. And I got to find out from this newest company that we got the bid from, that we're waiting to get the bid from. What that means is they had emailed Kim at the, at the building department on like a price list. And when I contacted them, they were like, okay, you're gonna get contacted by one of two people that's supposed to be in charge of this particular matter. That never happened. Even though I would call them and email them and I'd forward the emails to Kim. So finally, I got a hold of someone and they're in North Carolina. So you're talking about a company that I think is based in Pinellas County, but the main company's in North Carolina I don't know what their slate of the calendar is. I could contact them today, try to get through to the lady that I spoke to uh, last week and find out a timetable and then email Kim and I guess Kim and John to let them know. So I, mean, I, I just have no idea. Uh, my recommendation would be that we continue this uh, till the next meeting uh, for a status check. If, if he's not been able to demolish the property at that point, uh, the board to, could uphold, uh, assuming after the hearing, 
um, the order of the building official and the city would move forward with demolition at that time. Is that acceptable to you, Mr. Urquhart? Well, I think, I think in this situation, because we've been uh, going uh, with this back and forth for two years and in lieu of the neighbors and everything that have to put up with everything and the, uh, blowing and smelling all the, uh, the burnt structure that I believe the demolition would be attainable within 30 days. Uh, Mike McDonald, who rep represented with uh, Sam Sula, um, he works with John all the time, and I, I think it is doable where he could get it done in the 30 day because we're not worried about the uh, the oil tank on the ground because they've already said they can work around that. So if we go ahead and just push forward, we would uh, expedite any permit that comes in. We'd get it to him the same the same day that as soon as it comes in. So Mike already knows that, um, and this has been out there for uh, basically over two years. So I think um, I would be agreeable that it comes down within 30 days. Um, can I speak? Yeah, okay. Can I speak? Um, since we're part of this appeal is appealing the determination that this is a dangerous structure, um, could we just stipulate that the property owner stipulates and agrees with the building officials' determine, you know, determination that this is a dangerous structure needs to be demolished? So that issue's kind of off the table. And then I think that from what I'm hearing, the demolition is kind of a two-step process. There's the structure that is around the tank that, similar to what we did in the last hearing, within 30 days, at least have the permit obtained to demolish, if not demolish, but at least have the permit obtained to demolish the structure uh, around the tank and then at the next meeting we evaluate it and you can give a report as to the status of the removal of the tank at the next meeting because that sounds like a little more complex issue but it, it would be good to i mean part of the main part of this process is the first part is um appealing challenging the building officials determination that this is a um you know unfit unsafe structure needs to be demolished is uh, is part of the settlement i would think we're just stipulating that that is the situation you agree that the condition of the property is unsafe it needs to be demolished and we're really setting up a kind of a structured time process to allow you to accomplish the demolition and in this particular case it seems like a two-step process one step that you you might be able to complete but at least you should at least get the demol demolition per permit by next meeting for the structure around the tank and then you can provide an update on the status of the tank removal at the next meeting. Is that agreeable to you, property owner? I'm sorry, you're asking me that question? Yeah. Um, it, it is agreeable. Um, the uh, Just one correction, that the fire happened November of 2021. So the house has been in this condition for maybe 17 months, okay. not over two years, just for clarification. That's fine. I, I, I wish it was already done. We tried to get it done back in January, you know, um, but um, I'll, but, I'll be I'll be in close contact with Mike to come up with a, a plan, get that permit. All Florida plumbing already said they can do the well capping and that's a week turnaround time so that we can get the permit filed because it'd probably get denied without it soon. Okay. Um, so, so, yeah, the, the important thing from here is one uh you're you're in agreement with the um the city staff's finding as to the condition of the property and that it needs to be demolished you're in agreement with that yes okay um and then you're in agreement that you at least have the permits pulled to do the demolition of the structure around the tank uh by the next meeting of this board can you I, I didn't i didn't interrupt before but sometimes when y'all talk on a mic it's garbled so I, I didn't catch the beginning of what your this past this last question was can uh, would you mind repeating the last question was is uh can you obtain the permits from the city um for the demolition of the structure around the tank by the next meeting so within approximately 30 days i can file them I don't know what the city is going to do, and I can't guarantee that they'll approve it. But I can have it filed and okay. get all Florida to cap the well and, and make arrangements with um, with the demolition company. So 
I mean, without a doubt, I can have it filed. Okay, so within the next 30 days, you'll have it filed, and it's yes. all part of the ball will be in the city's hands to review and issue the permit. It, um, exactly. And then you, at, and also at the next meeting, can you give us an update on the status of the tank removal issue? Uh, absolutely. Okay. Do you have a date for the next meeting, or is that scheduled yet? Or? No, I think it's it is scheduled. scheduled. Yeah, Kim has. It. Tuesday, June twentieth. That's actually more than thirty days, so you're good. <laughs> yeah. So are you gonna continue the case? No. Or are we gonna uh -uh. Okay. Do you want me to throw out a motion again, like I did last time? Yeah. I mean, another, I really hate. It's another two-parter. <laughs> okay, or three-parter. Yeah. Um, a motion that, based on the stipulation and agreement of the property owner's representative, that the city's findings regarding the condition of 3000 Stanford Drive are hereby upheld. That by the next meeting of this board. The applicant will have submitted for a uh, demolition permit to remove the structure around the tank. And at the next meeting of this board, uh, the applicant will provide an update on it as to the status of the tank removal. Yes. Is that? Who's making the motion? I'll make the motion. <clears throat> okay. We need a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Do we have any other public? Discussion? Well, seeing none, I guess we'll take another roll call vote. Ms. Blodgett? Aye. Mr. Luton? Aye. Mr. Culver? Aye. Mr. Bailey? Aye. Four. Motion passes. All right. Thank you, Mr. Sheriff. We'll look forward to seeing and hearing from you next uh, meeting. Thank you. And again, an order will be provided, uh, signed by Mr. Bailey, uh, to the owner's representative and to the owner. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Move on to case C, BP 2023-0002-262 Lexington Drive, Appeal of Notice of Condemnation Demolition Order. Uh, again, the parties have worked out a tentative agreement, which uh, can be shared with the board uh, for approval uh, in the same manner. So, Mr. Urquhart, could you uh, explain the discussions? Glenn Urquhart, Chief Building Official, City of Daytona Beach. Uh, we visited this property yesterday, we being uh, myself and Mr. Cecil, and we met with the homeowner, and uh, she has uh, cleaned up the place as far as all the trash and debris, um, just like we asked. Uh, the back structure that is located to the uh, northeast uh, has been removed, so she uh, did demolish that. So now we're at the point of uh, she is in the middle of uh, going through a sale um, as far as with a real, a real estate transaction to um, sell the main part of the house. And this part right here is where she did, that was demolished because there was never a permit pulled for that. Um, so she's done everything we've asked as far as cleaning up. It uh, looks a, a lot better. and. Uh, so the, right now, they're just in the middle of the uh, real estate transaction. What is your recommendation? Recommendation is to continue um, uh, to the next meeting, and then that will give her enough time to uh, complete, hopefully, uh, the transaction, and then we'd be updated on that. Uh, thank you. We have some representatives here for the property owner and also the property owner. Um, we've got someone virtually. Let me start with uh, who's appearing virtually. Could you state your name, please? Brian Lane Carciola. And what is your relationship to the owner? I am the purchaser of the property. I am under contract currently. All right, very good. And the owner and your representative, if you would come forward, please. Bob, can I just quickly add that um, we, we they have added pictures as far as the structure being taken down, and they also have submitted a structural report and a scope of work for the construction to take place once they uh, purchase the property. All right, very good. Um, did you want to speak on her behalf or? 
You want to come forward? Very good. Just come forward, state your name into the microphone, and indicate whether or not you're the owner, and um, address the board. Hi, I'm Christine Henley. Um, I am inherited this property at 262 Lexington Drive. What else do I need? Um, is, is it your understanding, uh, similar to what was stated by Mr. Urquhart, that there's a new property owner and uh, everyone's working together to come into compliance? Can you tell us what work you've done? Yeah, um, well, I immediately had it cleaned up um, and we got the squatters out. Um, and I had the boathouse or the garage demoed. Um, we found a buyer that is uh, looking to rehab it. <laughs> we'll hear from the buyer in just a second. And um, yeah, just uh, been moving forward with this to the best of my ability. It's been very difficult to kind of get people lined up, getting people to call me back, but it, it's happening. So I'm feeling really good about the property and I'm really hoping it will be uncondemned and uh, rehab to its, beauty, its former beauty. Are you under contract for the sale? Yes. And when is your closing? Um, the 28th, I think, of this month. Of this month, very good. Um, did you want to speak at all? Just a little bit. All right. Did you have anything more to say? No, thank no. you for your consideration. Any questions from the board of the owner? No. I'm sorry. Mr. It's actually right down the street from my house. I'm sorry? I said that's about 200 yards from my house. Okay. That's real nice. All right. Um, he said he's one of your neighbors. I'm also one of her neighbors, too. Okay. It's a small city. Yeah. You have two neighbors. <laughs> and I'm a neighbor. All right. Across the street. Tell us your name David and your, Betts. And your uh, relationship to the owner. I'm a neighbor. I live at 269 Lexington Drive. And I look forward to meeting the new owner and having him go through the rehabilitation process. Uh, she's done the best that she could to the ability situation she was put in. And uh, just glad to see it. It's going to be happy. It's a, it's a nice historic structure. To the fabric of our neighbor, adding to the fabric of our neighborhood, we'd like to see restored. All right, thank you. Any questions of this witness? No. All right, uh, sir, uh, if you would again state your name and if you have anything to say to the board, please proceed. Uh, I'm speaking to the gentleman on uh, on camera. I'm sorry, it cut out there. All right. Um, yes, I'm Brian Wayne Carciola. I am. Uh, Currently under contract, and uh, we're looking forward to uh, being able to rehab this uh, this house. Um, it is going to be a, a personal house of mine. Um, I am on the historic uh, preservation society board for uh, City of Ocala, and I've done many rehabs, uh, many historic rehabs dating back to uh, structures in the 1880s. Um, I have submitted uh, to Kimberly and John a uh, portfolio of our projects um, uh, in general from our everything we do and then also a historical portfolio that we do as well. Um, and I have, uh, I believe I can share a screen. Oh. Never mind, it doesn't allow me to show the screen, but I do have renderings of uh, our plan, what we, we plan to do with the place and um, basically bring it back to its uh, formal, former uh, glory. So we're excited to be part of the project and um, hopefully uh, the city accepts us. And there is a structural engineer report. I'm sure everyone's already seen that, but uh, we did have a structural engineer come in and give his recommendation of uh, allowing the property to proceed um, with removing it off the demolition list and allowing a, a rehab to proceed. I haven't seen that. Oh, Joe Tina. This is a, a picture that was submitted, um, so we'll be able to I'll give, to give it to Bob to uh, pass it around to the board, and this is what they propose it to look like. Let's see if we can. Uh, zoom in on this. Are we able to get this on camera? All right. Um, and is this the uh, photo you're referring to in terms of your planned rehabilitation, sir? Yes, sir, it is. All right. I'll pass this around as well. Very nice. Mm. All right. Any questions from the board of any of the witnesses? No. No. I'm pleased. 
We actually had two. Of, there's two other sales that were on uh, Bowman. Both yeah. were, yeah. We had a lot of interest. Oh, I can imagine you're right on the water, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. I'm on Rio Vista. Okay. At, at this point, uh, the city would again recommend a motion if Mr. Simpson wants to walk us through it. But I assume we'd want some building permits pulled pull within the next 30 days and to bring us back for a status at the next meeting. Is that correct, Mr. Earhart? Yes, and um, since the building permit would be pulled by the, uh, the new owner with their, their contractor, uh, I would just be looking forward uh, or by the next 30 days at our next meeting, just uh, confirmation of sale. Uh, at that point, uh, the sale would have happened, and he can go ahead and make application uh, to the city. Just an open permit, then we I'm can off fill. The hook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're doing a great job, okay. and so then we just uh, we would have the application in place because you say the 28th. I think so. so the 28th, and as soon as he takes over, that would give him enough time to go ahead and uh, submit an application. Okay, I, I agree. Would it be better just to continue this case to the next meeting without? The other ones were a little different because yeah. everybody agreed that they needed to be torn down, so I wanted to set the process of tearing it down. This it, is a little different. Yeah, because the, the demolition, it's, uh, I mean, it's still the condemnation order's there. We're not taking it down, so we're, we're in agreement with everything. So we just continue for 30 days. You okay with that, Bob? Uh, that would be fine. As long as there's an understanding with the new owner that he'll need to pull permits within that time period. Okay. If he becomes a new owner. Yeah, yeah, assuming the property owner yes. Okay, okay very good. Uh, we'll need a motion then and approval and public comment if there's yep. any. Okay, so we have a motion to continue for 30 days, depending the new buyer obtaining permits. I guess, uh, yeah, a motion to continue with um, uh, if the buyer uh, does close on the property, that permit applications be submitted by the next meeting. A second. All right, so we have a motion and a second. Who no, made the motion? <laughs> you want to make the motion, Jess? Oh, I, yes, I wasn't paying exactly close attention, but we are make the motion that we revisit this case at the next meeting in, on June 20th, that the new owner will be applying for permits for the proposed work. Yeah. I believe that's it. That's the motion. Second. Okay, do we have any more discussion? Seeing none, roll call vote. Oliver? Aye. Blockett? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Last case. Case D. Okay. Case D, BP 2022-0007, 1054 Michael Road, Appeal of Notice of Condemnation and Demolition Order. All right. Before we begin, is there anyone here on behalf of the property owner? Yes. Um, have you been sworn in, ma'am? All right. Can we swear in this witness? Can we do it now? Sure. Um, whoever's going to uh, speak, can you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, but nothing but the truth, so help you God? Okay. What is your name, ma'am? John. Why don't you come up here to the mic so everybody can hear you? John Williams. That's my property at 1054 Michael Road, Daytona Beach, Florida. And you're the owner of this thing? Yes. Uh, the process here will be for uh, the city to present its witnesses, describe the condition of the property, and then you'll have a chance to ask some questions. Okay. Okay, very good. Uh, you guys seen, you'll have to come up to the front. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Cecil, tell the board how you first became aware of any issues on this property. I uh, received a phone call from the neighboring property stating that they had rodents that they believe was coming from the neighboring property. And when did that occur? That happened in February of 22. 
and what did you do in response to the call went out and did an inspection of the structure all right uh, was there anybody with you for the inspection there was not all right did you meet the owner at that point I did not all right tell us uh, what you observed on your first visit um, I went to the structure and when uh, first pulled up I did notice that the um, meter and there was no electricity at the, at the structure. All right, we've pulled up some photos now. Are mm -hmm. these photos from your first visit then? Yes. All right, and so let's, let's, do, let's do that. Let's go through the photos and have you describe what it is that you observed with regard to the, um, the structure and its, um, its condition. Okay. okay. All right, what have we got here? As you can see, the, there's no power at, at this structure. And here we have some overgrowth. This is on the back of the structure. It would be on the north side of the structure. As you can see, there's wood rot from um, the rain and the fascia. Everything's all rotted away. Uh, before you move on, um, I see a window underneath the fascia. Is, is that uh, point yes, of Yes, that window is shut. That window is, is shut. shut. Okay. It is shut, Very good. yes. And we see overgrowth here. Is that growing up into the rafters? It appears to be, yes. And this is a photo from the back. The, the structure wasn't boarded up at that time. Um, this is the inside photos taken from the back. It, the back of the structure looks like it was maybe a porch or something at one time. Then this is what you can see because it was all open. And it was unsecured. This is what you can see. As you can see, the somebody had took, taken a window out of this in the rear. What is, so, this, what is this opening on the left? The opening on the left, I wasn't actually that, exactly sure what that was. But it is open. We but it, is, it was right. open, yes. And you can see the uh, wood rot from the roof and the deterioration from the water. This is just a, a sex accessory structure that was in the back. It looks like uh, during the storms that a tree had something had fell on that. When you walk between that structure, that shed in this building, there's only like a maybe five foot, ten up to ten foot maybe walkway that you can go. So this is where that uh, window was taken out, and you can see there has to be water intrusion for the ceiling to be falling in like that. And then uh, we can see from this photo there's damage to the interior. That's correct. And is that damage beyond just the open window, or does that indicate any roof damage? That r indicates roof damage. As you can see here, also that's above that window, as deterioration, water intrusion, and it, everything is just falling down from that. The fact that things are falling down does that indicate a safety hazard? For yes, it does. Next slide. What we got? And you have another window here that was missing; it was taken out. And as you can see, I'm, I kind of took this shot shooting up towards the sky. As you can see, the light spot in the back. That's where there has to be a hole in the roof because there's light coming through. So there's water intrusion getting in. This is the front of the structure. And this is back around the back, or on the west side again, where there's no lecture. Walking, walking around it again. This is after the postings. The first ones you see didn't have the postings. Now this ha does have the postings on it, which was a week later. There's another. That's of the inside. As you can see, there's water intrusion. Ceiling's caving in. If you look down at the floor, right around the tile, all, all the rot, drywall, everything is damaged. And that's getting into the elect electrical, because there is no power at that structure. So when it does rain, there's water setting in there, and it's getting into electrical. Another photo. Another photo. Showing the back. They're showing that all the windows were taken out. I'm. I'm. Not sure if the windows were taken out by the owner or someone did, you know, go vandalism going through there. 
that just shows a posting on the side door of the garage. That's a zoomed in picture of that ceiling. As you can see, the duct work and everything is fell down out of the ceiling from all the rot. Right, uh, on this it's, photo, what, what's a note here? That's just showing all the overgrowth that there has not been anybody at this location for some time and that there is no electric. Also, again, another front. All right, so these, these are more recent photos now, yes. correct? When yes. was the last time you were at the site? Um, yesterday. All right, and uh, these photos were taken for 1823, is that correct? That's correct. All right, um, has anything changed between your initial visit, which was documented in the previous photos, and your most recent visit? There has. They, they have boarded up in the whole back of the structure. And I'll just flip through some of these, and I believe that I have some pictures if they're included. As you can see, they did secure the, the property to where vandalism or anything could not happen. Has electricity been restored to the property? It has not. And is the property, does the property continue to be, in your opinion, um, dangerous and dilapidated to the point where it's unfit for human occupancy? Yes. Um, I don't want to cut you short. Uh, uh, let's uh, let's continue to go through your most recent photos okay. and describe you know what you're seeing. Okay, this is just showing. See how the roof and you know you got your drip edge is separating from the from the roof. So that's showing the water damage that everything's separating, or it's falling down and it's pulling on that. Back. It shows more deterioration. You can see the uh, the pipe, the vent pipe over here on the bottom left hand is also separated. That's just showing the overgrowth and irrigation wood rot of the roof. And your electric. This is on the front porch. Uh, water getting into the beam that runs across the front porch. As you can see, there's wood rot, so that's that's causing from um, leaky of water getting getting on there. And that fern is growing from the inside out. That's correct. So that would indicate what to you? That there is a possibly a hole in the in the roof that's letting debris get down in there and then starting. Next slide. Posting for the white property. Okay. Okay, we're back in old photos. Okay, very good. Uh, thank <laughs> you. Any questions of the board from Mr. Cecil? Right. Uh, does the property owner have any questions, of Mr. Cecil? All right, very good, Mr. Perfect. Glenn Urquhart, Chief Building Official, City of Daytona Beach. Mr. Urquhart, when were you last out at the site? Yesterday. And uh, do you have an opinion as to whether or not the property is so dilapidated or deteriorated so as to be um, dangerous, uh, insanitary, and unfit for human occupation? Yes, I do. What is your opinion? My opinion at this point, it is past the 50% uh, rule. That's basically when you're 50% uh, past the value of the house. Um, they have, they're going to have to get a new roof, uh, fascia, soffit. Um, you're dealing with mechanical upgrades, uh, electrical, and then you've got uh, structural cracking around the garage. So the, by the time you add up all these uh, values, it's going to pass definitely the 50% rule, which then makes them also have to abide by the uh, FEMA standards. All right. So what you're telling the board is it's essentially unreasonable for the property owner to attempt to rehabilitate the property? Yeah, at this point, yes. And that's because it would cost too much, basically, to fix it up. Uh, compared to the value of the site itself. Yes, sir. All right. um, did you observe the interior, or were you only able to observe the boarded up? Just the pictures of the interior, and then uh, just the uh, the boarding up. Um, now you do have some people are getting in in the back window. They just have a four by four propped up against a uh, sheet of plywood that can be moved from side to side. So um, once buildings get like this, they're an attractive nuisance to vagrants looking for a place to go. So it, uh, it definitely has accessibility for them in that uh, back one. So even as of your, your visit most recently, the property was not secured 
such that vagrants could not enter? They, they could enter in the, through the back window, yes. Very good. Uh, and you would agree, I assume, uh, and I want you to, to talk to this a little bit, that based on your review of these interior uh, photos, the property is not habitable? 100% not. Yeah, you, you would have to, uh, all the drywall and everything is saturated. You got, uh, it appears, uh, mold growing um, in that uh, picture right there. Um, you've got the ceilings that have sagged. You've got the, um, as well as the, the walls that have all absorbed moisture. And it originally was posted before the storm, so the, you've had two massive rain events that have happened since then um, to attribute to what was already there. Very good. Any questions of Mr. Cecil? I just want yes, to know what would be required to get a roofing permit for that project. Would... For for this situation, uh, we would require a full scope of work, and not just a, a lot. A lot of times, they'll they'll get the roof, then it will just stay like that mm -hmm. for another two to three years. Okay. Then it would still allow the in, the inside to uh, further deteriorate. So, in in situations like this, we'd like to get a full scope of work on the whole house. Any other questions for Mr. Urquhart? Did the property Thank you. have any questions of Mr. Urquhart? Yeah. Um, very good. Uh, you may come up and address the board. I'll start with your name again. I'm Sean Wood. <clears throat> 1054 is my own um, property. Um, Can the you pull the mic down just a hair? Thank you. The pictures that they're showing is just the, it's the um, add-on on the back end of the house. As you saw, that they sh didn't show no pictures of the front because the front is um, is is in good standing. Just the back end where the house caught on fire, contractor came out, stole my money, twenty-eight thousand dollars, which I can prove. I have um, I um, was sick before COVID. I went through surgery and everything, so I wasn't able to stay on getting it. You know being able to save up again to get it fixed or whatever, but anything and everything that the city asks me to do, I do it immediately. And Kim and um, John will tell you when they ask me to do something, I do do it. And I, I come out and do everything I'm supposed to do. Um, when I went in to, um, <clears throat> when I first got the, the notice for the, um, con um, to be condemned, I went up to the city, I paid the money or whatever, and I wanted to get a permit then to get the windows put in and start working on it. Kim said I couldn't do it yet because I had to wait till inspectors come out and um, look at the rest of the house, which if you're saying that my house is unsafe, why well, I can't go ahead and start, you know, fixing it on it, doing the things to make it safe so I can have time to save up the money to get it fixed. And that's what I've been, you know, doing. And then I caught COVID. I had COVID almost, almost a year, and I could prove that. So I'm just now getting back up on my feet a couple of months ago, and I've been saving to get my house fixed. I do have an escrow account that, um, you know, I'm able to um, start working on it and get the things, whatever I have to do to get it out of being condemned, I can do that. So I'm, I'm you know, my grandmother left me that house, and I want to get that house fixed because it's livable. Once I get the electricity done and the windows done, I have a contract I had. I had over three or four contractors to come out to tell me that my house was, once I get the roof fixed and get that back end fixed, which they, that's all they kept showing was that, you know, my house would be in good standards. So I would like the, a chance to, you know, to get it back up and running and have it livable for me and my family. I have one question. Was there insurance on the house? It was insurance on the house. Um, um, once I had, when I had got sick before I had surgery and everything, um, I had got, I had got behind in my house payments, and I didn't know that they took the overall. You know how you go get your own, purchase your own insurance. I didn't know that that came off, and then they had to add insurance on it. So all this time, I've been, I thought I still had insurance because my insurance come out of my. When I pay my uh, mortgage, the insurance come out and my taxes. So I, you know, I try to be, have everything so one payment pays it all. So that's how it was, but I didn't know, you know, I just didn't have no knowledge that um, if you get behind in your payments that your insurance, you know, your, out, your insurance outside of your mortgage company 
collapse and then they add insurance. I just didn't know. I'm sorry. Well, I there still would have been an insurance policy. They would have done a forced place policy on you if you're not paying your mortgage. Yeah, that's what they did. Yeah. yeah. So didn't you make a claim for the repairs or? Yes, I did. I had I had the insurance money. A contractor came and stole my money. The contractor that my mortgage company had sent to me stole the money. I can prove that. They stole they stole the money. They came out, they didn't do anything. My house had caught on fire in the back. That room that they keep showing, that's where the fire was. And that's how the windows got um, bust out because when they came, they bust the windows to put out the fire. And when, um, I forgot what storm it was, but the storm, when the storm came, that had blew it off. But fast forward, um, the city was going to help me. I came and talked to the people right up here, and they was going to help me put a roof on. My, a roof would have been on my house like last month. But I went to the, I went down to the prop property appraiser, they said I had to help, because they took me, I'm not home exempt anymore, they took me off, so they said I had to be home exempt for them to be able to fix my roof. And I went down and I asked them what they please home exempt me, because that is the only property that I have, and that I was, I just didn't leave, I was, I told, you know, I was told once when the house caught on fire that I had to leave, so I was like, you know, in, in that case, can you, you you know please help me because once I get the roof put on, I have to I can do everything else. I just need y'all help with getting the roof put on. And um, she said if they told me if I can go down and get it put back on, be exempt, then they will help me um, get my roof put on. But they didn't they didn't do it. Well, it sounds like <clears throat> from uh, Glenn's. Uh, assessment of the property that you're going to have to get a contractor. I have a contract. That's going to have to do the whole scope of work, not just the roof. It would have to include everything. He's going to do the whole house. Right. He's going to do the entire house. You're going to need to provide that. Probably if we continue for another month, you think, Bob? Uh, we could, from the city's perspective, we'd like some assurances. She has adequate funds. Uh, right. The contractor's capable of doing the work. Um, just some assurance that she's able to move forward. Um, Maybe I can just ask that directly. Uh, how do you intend to move forward if the if this matters continue to allow you to proceed? What What do you mean move forward? Do you have funds available to pay your contractor to get him uh, moving on the repairs? Yes. All right. And could we hear from the contractor, or would the board like to hear from the contractor in terms of you know what they intend to do? What part of the house caught on fire? Inside the house, what area? The the back end, the back. Um, a living room, a family room, something like that? It, it was just an add-on room. Add-on room, and what did you determine what the cause of the fire was? Uh, determined at all? Um, I, th I think he said, um, I'm not sure what he said that caught it on. I think he said it was uh, electrical. That's what I was going to ask. Is it electrical? And, uh, that ties yeah, I think he said it. Work too. Yeah, I think he said it was um, electrical when it rained. Well, I know when it rained, it I think the um, lightning had hit something out there. It's something had hit. I know that because the whole the um, box blew off the house. The house caught on fire. The whole you know something happened. I don't know what happened. It happened outside, and then that's when the house caught on fire. So, so you Have you received an estimate for the work? All the work that's required? No. All right. Uh, did From the other contractors, yes, but um, yeah. Do you have an idea as to how much it would cost to rehabilitate the property? Well, um, two other, one contractor had told me um, 25000 and another one had told me, um, I think it was, I want to say it was 28 something. I'm not sure exactly how much. I know one was 25 and that was um, all Florida uh, contractors. And then, um, um, Mr. Wright told me 28. If y'all know him, out of right husband, him, he told me 28,000. And um, and um, Jerome, um, he hasn't given me an estimate yet. He said he was um, what we was gonna do was whatever the city wanted us to do first. That's what we was gonna try to take care of first before he's, you know. In the other Understood. stuff. Understood. But the board like to hear from the contractor at all? Yes, we would. Yes, mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, sir, would you come forward? If you wish. You're not required to speak, but if you'd like to speak, you can. Uh, I was able 
Come up to the microphone so they can hear you, please. I, I work with several different contractors and engineers, architects. Um, I'm locally educated. Tell us your name again. My name is Jerome Thompson. Jerome Thompson. Yes, um, I got involved, I guess around the time she filed for the appeal. So with the house being condemned, that limits us with, you know, moving forward with anything. So I wanted her to deal with you guys. Um, whatever it is that you guys are focused on, I know it's the back part of the house at this point. Uh, whatever you guys have for us to review, we'll make sure we deal with that first, immediate, and we'll get prices together and get up. Whatever you guys scope of work, get all that. We want to know where we need to start and where we One more thing I want to add. Um, when um, John and them first went out in the, the back end, um, somebody had, the bo it was boarded up before. Somebody had took it off. Like um, this gentleman said, somebody had took it off and had went in the house. And when um, I got the summons to come come to court and find out that it was on there, I had him. He came and he put the boards up immediately. Anything they asked me to do, I do it immediately. When the um, I have a yard man that comes every every um, month. He comes every two weeks. Just because I was sick and I wasn't able to go over there and check on him, that's how the growth got up on the house. And then I guess when I was sick, that's how. I, um, I guess my neighbors had started getting um, rodents or rats or whatever the case might be. But before then, my house um, caught on fire in um, 2015. The contractor didn't come out to like uh, 2000 and something. Well, anyway, I put the permits and everything. If the city can tell you, I put the permits and everything for the um, to start for him to start working on the house and. Um, he, he didn't do anything. Like I said, he stole my money and left, and they, they have that information, you know, that nothing went forward because he stole my money. But anything they, they ask me to do, I do it immediately. I do it immediately. Whatever it is that they ask me to do, I do it immediately. Um, if I could ask uh, the contractor, are, are you a licensed contractor? Yes, sir. And I'm a I deal with four or five different contractors. Step up to the mic again, I'm sorry. I deal with four or five different contractors, engineers, architects. I'm a I'm a I'm the guy that I'm a paperwork. I I deal with all the the orchestration of these of these situations. Um from financing to flow charts, whatever you whatever you need for it. Uh, I'm has, a theoretical guy. Has there been a contractor selected to actually do the work? Uh Marlon, is it Marlon Taylor or Marion Taylor? Marlon Taylor, Mr. Taylor. I don't know if you guys are familiar with him. Um, state line contractors, I think it is. I know he's the one that we um that I consider that would be doing the roof. Um uh, I have Mr. Lucas, um like I said, I lost Bo Hardick last year. Um so yes, yeah, between Marlon Taylor and Daryl Lucas, those are my main two that for this particular project I've been talking with about it. But like I said, we were waiting um to see what you guys say or whatever, because you ain't have a, have these guys running around and then, you know, they don't work, and that costs money. So, yeah, but Mr. Taylor's actually waiting on standby whenever, whenever he gets to go for the roof. I know that. Uh, that was obvious to us. Um, as far as the uh, electrical and things of that nature, um, that's no problem. We can get, um, like I say, between Taylor. I know Huger has uh, contractors he deal with, with electrical. Um, I can call my guy. Uh, I deal with Petey. I forgot the name of the actual company. Um, I also have Joseph. Um, what's his last name? Joseph uh, Smack. What's the name of his company? High Tech Electric or something? Joseph, you guys may be familiar with him. I don't know. But um, yeah, there's no problem with that. I, I can bring the guys in as long as you guys are okay and the finances are in place. There's no problem. We get them in, get it out, bang it out. Some question the homeowner. I got a little confused. The original fire started in 2015, and then later on you got sick and all that. You got ripped off after 2015, and it's been going on since 2015. Is that what you're saying? Then COVID, everything hit sickness, and then this, and then the house getting repaired. Right. And you got ripped off back in 2015. You're right. Okay. Yeah, we came in. Time. Yeah, we yeah. came in. I guess whatever she did appeal. That's why I said I got sick after that, and COVID came after that. It wasn't like I wasn't trying. That's why every time, you know. They had a problem with me. I took care of it immediately because I was trying, you know, save and do all the kind of things that, you know. And then I had I had a rental. I was paying for a rental house and 
paying for my mortgage at the same time, you know, trying to do everything by myself. Yeah, yeah. So it's been hard. What I understand is you want to save the property in time. Right. You it's, have the funds as far as scope of work and all that. I want to. I've been trying. So how much time do you need to obtain the builder and permits or plans and to submit for permitting? Um, we should have the, uh, we have to generate actual plans, blueprints, whatever as well. Okay. Um, hmm, I don't know how tense those guys are. I guess give it what, 30 to 45 days to come up with, you know, drawings and all that, um, scope of work. Um, cause I don't know how, how busy, um, I deal with Mr. DeWitt still for my um, certification for the engineering drawings and stuff like that. And I know he's retired, but he still is functional. So I don't, yeah, give us 30 to 45 days. We can get on it and get the stuff moving around. Yep. That's so can we continue this for like two meetings to 60 days? And uh, I think that the scope of work we should be able to get within 30 days. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. You know. Okay. No problem. Okay. Um, Mr. Burkhardt, uh, uh, Certainly. Glen Urquhart, City of Daytona Beach, Chief Building Official. Um, what I wanted to bring up was as far as the FEMA guidelines with the storms and everything that uh, have happened, um, anytime you break the 50%, then you get into where you have to also meet the elevation requirements if you're in a flood zone. So in this situation, I just spoke with, uh, uh, with uh, Mr. Jagger about this, is um, giving them uh, the opportunity to have a contractor spell out all the cost because what I'm given is my determination of what I see and what we have there as far as with a structural report. So if you get us a, a structural report uh, as far as for the building and get us a, um, a clear scope of all of the work that needed to be done in a tabulation of the, the total, and then if that came in under the 50%, that would take you away from the guidelines of FEMA. So we would just have to have proof that it doesn't break the 50% barrier. Because if it does break the 50% barrier, then it would actually have to be raised, the, the house itself. So uh, we'll give you the opportunity on that and go from there. What is it you'd like to see by the next meeting? If um, they could go ahead and get us the uh, contractor's uh, scope of work with the uh, exact cost of everything, of what it would, this it would be inclusive of windows, um, doors, if any, the roof, electrical, mechanical, uh, soffit, fascia, everything to uh, repair the house because it's a total, re the total mm -hmm. repairs as well as drywall on the inside and all that. Get us a, a total tabulation of uh, then uh, also, um, I, I don't know if a structural report would be feasible in 30 days because structural engineers are pretty busy right now, but at least to get us a clear scope of work by the next um, meeting uh, showing what the costs are, uh, the costs are actually going to be. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. that sounds like you gotta make that motion fall. Yes, I move to continue this to the next meeting and for the owner to have uh, a cost of the re cost of the rehab and at the next meeting. Scope of work. But in scope of work spelled out. Do you wanna and that shed, I'm having the shed removed. The guy that was supposed to um, remove the shed, he had got backed up, and he said he's, he's still going to remove it for me. Okay. Actually, because yeah, we can do that at the next meeting. Okay. So the tree had fell on it, but I had the tree and everything removed. When the, um, when the storm came, that whole, that whole back end back there had trees down in the backyard, and I had all of it cleared out. And the last thing he had to do was remove the shed, but he haven't, um, he hasn't, he hasn't done it yet. Okay, so we have a motion. We need a second. I'll second it. We have a second, and uh, we have more discussion. You do you understand what we're requiring for the in the next meeting? Mm-hmm. To have everything written up, um, showing that all the costs and everything that need to be fixed. Break down the entire scope of work. All right to bring it up to current code because that's okay. probably is there a template meeting. for the city for you know, from the city to give them so that we're on the same page a template that they can make sure that they're dotting their i's and their t's across is there a little template to help them out no, no. 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 You got well the contractor work. should know yeah uh, the license contractor has to provide, to provide all of it okay. yeah thank mm -hmm. you i'm lost <laughs> just uh, stating 
he was just asking if we had a template that has a standard as far as the scope that. of work. Uh, so we said no. So your contract will know what to do and spell out um, the exact scope with the tabulation of all the monies that we talked about. Oh, okay. Safety, okay. Yeah. Oh, you. Oh, okay. You talking about the overall? Um, safety yeah, exactly. Right. There was a standard template. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, yeah, I get you. Can I just ask a question on that FEMA issue? When they come in and they give you an estimate of the scope of work and it comes in under 50%, do you actually go back and get actual cost of work? And what if you do, what happens if it, when they actually do it, it exceeds 50%? If you exceed 50%, then you have to abide by the FEMA guidelines and the house has to be raised um, as far as because you're in the flood zone. So this is a big thing that they're on as far as especially with the storms that just happened. Right. So they, they go around, and, and any homes that break the 50% guideline, that's their requirement as far as moving forward. Is that right. I, but, I mean, you you get an estimate up front and say, okay, it's under 50% of the assessed value. Is that what we, or fair market yep. value or assessed okay. value? Assessed value. So if it's under 50%, but do we follow up to confirm that was the actual cost afterwards, or is it just solely based on the estimate, or do we ever actually look at the actual cost incurred? We're going, just like when we get the building permits, we're going on the trust of uh, the contractor submitting to us saying that this is gonna be 59,500, we're gonna go by exactly what they uh, present to us. Okay. Yeah, why well, wouldn't they? They'd be cheating themselves. Well, <laughs> and we do get that. I mean, some people, they know how to play the numbers games right. and stuff. So oh. it's um, it's one it's a trust game. So well, okay. whatever's presented to us. Okay. Yeah. I have a question. It is important to note, though, that it's the value of the structure at the current yeah, property manager. Oh, yeah. At Kim Flaherty, City of Daytona Beach, it's important for you guys to understand when you get that value, you have to go by what the property appraiser currently has that structure valued at. So it can't be more than 50% of that number. If you can't do comps in the neighborhood, something like that, it has to be the value of your structure currently. Thank you, Kim. Now we have a motion, we have a second. Can we get a roll call vote if there's no further discussion? I don't see any. Aye. 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 Right. Motion passes. All right. Thank you very much. We'll see you at the next meeting on the twentieth. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Since we don't have any cases to review, do we have any any new business? No new business. I guess we are adjourned at ten thirty-three. <laughs>